Okay, today we're just going to a, a quick tutorial on how to repair Game & Watches. Um, we're just going to cover the early versions of Nintendo Game & Watch, just the single screen versions. Uh, now the great thing about uh, Game & Watches are that they've got an excellent build quality, they're really, really good, well made, and they're uh, quite modular in design, so a lot of the common issues you get with them are relatively easy to repair. So we're just going to go through uh, today with a version of Popeye, and we're just going to do a couple of things to, to improve it. And uh, as I go through, I'll tell you some of the common issues you get with these and how you go about repairing them. Okay, so we're just going to see uh, what makes up a, a Game & Watch, and we're going to open one up. So firstly is obviously you just take the battery cover off and take the batteries out. And then you need a screwdriver. I use a, a flat screwdriver. I find that one about that size is fine, but you can use some mini screwdrivers if you've got them. And so you have just a series of screws on the outside, which are relatively easy to undo. Let's just quickly undo them all. Okay, we've got all the screws out. Now, when you open it, uh, one important thing to uh, remember is that you see on the top right-hand corner here, there's a little gap there. What there is is actually two little teeth in there, so you have to push it, uh, just lift it, that back end up and then push it a bit out that way, because otherwise if you just pull it straight up, you'll actually break these two teeth off. So once you open it up, what you'll find inside is that there's a, another series of screws, which are smaller screws, which are actually holding the board to the front of the, the plate. So what we now do is take it off those screws. Okay, so now we've got the, uh, the screws off the back. I'll just go through a couple of the components. This is the speaker for the, the Game & Watch, and sometimes you'll find that these cords can get disconnected. So it's a very simple uh, just resoldering job if that's the problem. So now let's actually look at the other side of the board. So what you do is just gently lever it out, which is usually relatively easy to get out. And we turn it over. And already you can see some of the parts coming out. So this back part is called the reflector, and it's used to give a background to the Game & Watch, so you can actually see the, the, um, the screen. Now commonly with the reflector is that you can get damage to that, uh, which looks similar to that. If you see that, that means that uh, the machine's actually had some moisture damage in the past, and the only real way of fixing that is by putting a new reflector in. You can buy them on the internet, or alternatively, you can buy another, say, cheaper game and swap it in uh, from that game to the new one. So that's a relatively easy repair. But uh, you can't, once, once the reflector gets like that, you can't really repair it. I've tried to, all sorts of ways of trying to clean it, but I can't seem to be able to remove it. So you actually have to replace it. But that just slips in like, like that behind there, very simply. So it just comes in and comes out really easily. Okay, the other part that you'll see is that the front of the screen <coughs> has different layers. The next layer up is what's called the scenery layer. And the early series have, uh, the silver series have a black and white scenery. And this one has a colour one. And some of the later versions of the single screen actually have multiple scenery. So you get more than one, you actually get two scenery levels. But this has just got the one. And then at the very front you've got what's called the polarizer. The polarizer is the piece of um, the screen that actually shows the pixels up or, not, or the actually LCD up. So what it does is it actually um, it polarizes the light, so it makes the black looks black and the background white looks look lighter. Now generally with this, because it's the outer layer, it's the dirty one, so what we simply do with that is you just wash it in soapy water. Okay, so we've cleaned the polarizer. Just uh, to note with the polarizer, it is only one directional. So if you notice here, if we put it down that way over the screen, everything looks white. If you turn around that way, it all looks black. So if you put it around the wrong way, what you'll find is that all our characters will be white and the background will be black. And you can play it that way if you like, but it's not the right way, obviously. So just as a guide, so what you do is if you put it over the screen like that and it's black, it means that this is the face that faces out. So when we put it back in there, we put it like that and you can be always sure that you've got the right way. And then you just put the scenery back on top of it. Once again, make sure it's the right way around. And now, um, also with the polarizer, sometimes you, you'll find that when you play the game that the uh, characters will look really light, light grey, and that's often because the polarizer is damaged. That usually happens because people have played the game out in the sun. 
and the sun actually deteriorates the polarizer. It's really easy to fix though, is you just get a new polarizer and once again you can buy them on the internet and you just swap the new polarizer in. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to clean the terminals. So often what you'll find is when you play a game that the, the buttons are very unresponsive or sometimes completely unresponsive. And that just means that there's been gunk that's been built up in the terminals over time and they just need to be cleaned. So you just get a, a, um, a cotton, cotton bud and some rubbing alcohol and the easiest way is just to, is just to rub it over the terminals and you'll see these aren't particularly dirty but they're a little bit dirty. See the little bit of blackness coming off. <coughs> so it's just the, the main button terminals. You can also clean these ones but they're usually not very dirty. And then just dry them off, make sure all the rubbing alcohol is off. But also remember too that uh, you need to clean the backs of the buttons too because they also have a build up too. So if you just clean those and give them a good clean and see they're quite dirty, see how that quite a bit of black's coming off that. And that will make the game a lot more responsive. And I've had games which just haven't worked at all and you clean them up and they just work perfectly. That they almost always clean up. Sometimes too there's a little bit of gunk that's just fallen in there so you just clean that up. So you just do that across all the buttons and it will all nice and clean and all, you'll find that the game will play much better. Okay, also just underneath here uh, is the uh, little silver things that set the time and the alarm. Just they drop out too, so just be really careful you don't lose them, but they just drop back in again if they come out and everything sits in there. So we've cleaned all the, t all the terminals, so everything's looking good now. We'll put it back together again. Now something I didn't tell you is when you take this, uh, the, uh, the board apart is that there's actually a little spacer and often people, uh, when they're putting it back together, find this and have no idea where it's actually come from. So the idea here is it just sits in this little corner here and it just makes the board sit nice and smug, snug with the, with the actual front of the machine. It can be quite tricky to actually <coughs> get that back in there. And in the Silver Series actually there's actually two spaces. There's this space on this side and there's actually little uh, squares of plastic on this side and it actually can be really tricky, tricky to get them back in. To be honest, my experience is if you don't put them back in, it doesn't really make any difference. But if you've got an original game, then it's always good to try to get it all still uh, original. So it's always best to try to put it back if you can. But sometimes it can be quite tricky. But now it's just a matter of placing the board back over and just aligning it. And when you get it right, it should just drop into place. And we just have to jiggle it around a little bit. And sometimes that space it gets in the way. Just make sure it's all okay, it's actually fallen over. And okay. <laughs> Can be sometimes a little bit more tricky than it looks. And I've actually spent sometimes 10 minutes trying to get boards back in. Okay, so that one's just fitted in nice and snugly there. <coughs> Okay, now we have to look at the screws and what we want to do is get all the shorter screws because they're the ones that hold the board, board in and the longer screws. So there's four shorter screws and then the longer screws. So the trick here is, is with these ones is to work out which are the ones that hold the, the, the board together and which ones are actually come right through and hold the back on. So sometimes you have to balance it over to work it out. So that one is one that holds the board on. And so what you do is you put all the board screws back on. Okay, so uh, the, another tip when you're putting the board screws on, sometimes if you look closely at the actual circuit board, you can see a slight bearing where, where the board screws go. That can sometimes help you to work out which screws holes are for the board screws. <coughs> and also in the later versions of the game, like uh, Turtle Bridge and even some of the later Octopus versions, uh, you'll actually see that there's a white circle around the, where the board screws go, which makes it really, really easy. Okay, now we just put the back on and then we screw it up completely. Once again, just as the warning when to take it off, to put it back on again, is you just need to engage these two little teeth. So it's a matter of taking it slightly over that side and just pushing it down and making sure the two teeth engage and then making, pushing the board down flush and then just putting the screws in. And it's all done. So we'll put this all back together and then we'll make sure it's all working once we've done it all. Okay, so it's all back together now and this game wasn't very, the buttons weren't very responsive when I first got it and now they're beautiful, they're working fantastically. 
Now the other common problems you have with these games is screen bleed. So this is an example of a, quite a bad screen bleed where you get these dark marks on the screen. Also you can have much subtler versions of screen bleed where if you look at this game here you just see there's very slight dark patches which is also a slight screen bleed. Unfortunately there's no way to repair that unless you actually swap out the whole board with a new board uh, because there's actually a damage to the LCD panels. And, uh, but that's another common problem you find with these games. Um, but they're, they're, it's not really repairable. So if you have any questions about repairing a game, watch us, uh, by all means, uh, post a comment and I will try to respond to you. And also watch out for some uh, other uh, of my YouTube clips which uh, review some of the Game & Watch games.